In this video, I want to show you how you can get all the user input in one function. In my plugins, oftentimes there's two separate stages. The first stage is asking the user for all the inputs that I need. And then in the second stage, I feed that info into my plugin functions and let it do its magic based on the user input. So if you want to do that as well, I want to show you a simple trick that you can use to make your main functions a bit cleaner. And before we dive into the code, let me just explain why that is important. Remember the video on comments? I said in that video that you will be surprised by how easy it is to unlearn your own code. If you want to continue work on an old plugin a few months down the road, maybe half a year, maybe a full year in the future, then you will be surprised by how long it takes you to actually get back into the mindset of that plugin and how it's structured. So by having a main function that's really clean and having code in general that is very clean and is very well readable, it makes it a lot easier for you to figure out where you want to add new functionality or where exactly you have to make changes without breaking the whole code. So this is one of those tricks where ideally your main function is just calling a bunch of functions that you can then sort of look up in your plugins code. But just by looking at the main function, you know pretty well what's happening in that plugin. Let's take a look at the trick now. If we take a look at the code, and in this case, I'm just going to go through the code and then I'm going to show you that it actually works as intended. But usually what you would do is maybe something like this, just a bunch of gma.txt inputs to get certain information from the user. And you might recognize this example. We've had this a few times now. So in this case, we are interested in an object type and then in a range end or start and then an end. Now down here would be our sort of body of the plugin, if you will. So that's, <clears throat> that's the part of the plugin where all of the functionality is actually located in. In this example though, we're just focusing on the user input. And what's cool is that you don't need all of this stuff. You could actually have it like this. Much simpler, right? Now I'm taking a look at the main function and I see what's happening here. We are asking for a preset range. So we're getting the preset range from the user. All right, simple enough. Let's check out the get preset range from user function to figure out what these values are that we're asking from the user and which attributes we're assigning them to in this preset range table. And looking up here, you can see all I'm doing is creating this empty table and then I'm directly assigning all of this user input to these different attributes. And what's cool about that as well is that you can actually hide the complexity of things. So let's say you want to make sure that the preset type that a user enters here is correct. So somewhere between zero and nine or eight. See, I don't know at this point, but you might write this function that loops until a user enters a valid input. We don't need to have that in the main function because the main function doesn't care. It just needs to get this input from the user and then feed that into your plugin functions that actually perform the actions of this plugin. So in this case, this is a great way to actually hide all of that complexity. So as I said down here, get non-empty user input. We could also use that here. But at the end of the day, this part down here doesn't change. This first step that we're getting the user input and then we continue working with it. So this is a really cool way and this is a great example of how you can use tables to simplify your code in Lua. And in case this weird table syntax doesn't make sense to you, please go back to the video on using tables and more specifically using tables in Lua like a map. That's exactly where I explain this pattern. And that's one function to get all your user input doesn't always work like that, but it's a great idea to make your plugin just a little more easy to read and maintain.